Dear Florent, I have come across your YouTube channel and listening to you giving advice to people touched me deeply. It made me acknowledge that I have a similar problem which I considered unimportant until now. Since you have such a deep understanding of the creative process, I would appreciate it if I had an opportunity to hear your thoughts on what's happening to me. Last year, I discovered my passion for writing. I was so excited and enjoyed it very much on a daily basis. I had inspiration, I liked reading what I wrote, I never felt I had a purpose in life, like when I was writing. And then it all simply turned around somehow. My inspiration was gone. When I read something I wrote, I felt disgust. Now I can't stand the thought of writing anything at all. It seems everything I write is meaningless. And I know a huge part of me wants to write, but the other part is resisting so much. I don't even have access to it anymore. I would like to understand what happened. And can I do anything to bring the flow back? Because like this, my days are passing in agony of a battle with myself. Thank you for taking the time to read my letter. Lila. Dear Lila, what you're experiencing is something most artists have to go through at some point. You've burned your inspiration out like a straw fire. It happens to most of us, especially in the beginning. Know that there's always a small ember somewhere within yourself. A small ember with enough potential to bring this fire back to life and make it bigger than you can imagine. Just don't let it die out completely. You need to keep feeding it. Trying something new, learning to create, is never a linear progression. At first, progress rises very strongly. So does optimism and enthusiasm. But soon, the curve flattens. Things seem to go much slower than before. After the crazy rush of the early days, there is a long plateau where progress is much slower and requires much more effort. You have to remember that you started with nothing, so in the very first days, maybe the first year, of course, the differential between nothing and something feels like a huge rise. But soon enough, you start realizing that you need to learn more to reach your goals, but this time, it's not as easy. Things really become hard once you reach an intermediate level, when you know most of the beginner stuff, but you start realizing how much you still need to learn and how much effort you still need to put into it. When things start to resist, you have two options, apathy or perseverance. You can give up and do nothing, or you can push against the wind with everything you've got. Everyone is creative as long as it's only a matter of having ideas. But having the idea is only a spark. And a spark alone isn't enough to make a fire. After the initial idea comes the fight against everything that tries to resist its actualization. This resistance is only felt when the idea tries to be embodied in an actual reality, in a book or a painting. Most people are not creative, and it's not because they don't have ideas, but because they don't have the perseverance to realize them when things start to resist. Most people give up on this need to create when they realize that the world is always resisting them. What's the point, they ask? It's this possibility that hides behind every impulse to act and that is reinforced when the obstacle comes closer. The greater your will to create, the more stubbornly the world will resist you. Most people are only creative in thoughts. They never confront their idea to the actual world. 
everything just remains in their head forever, but in there it doesn't exist. The idea needs to take shape in the actual world to exist. It needs to be shared. The story needs to be written. The picture needs to be painted. It will require a tremendous amount of energy. It will require that you give everything you've got, but you need to persevere. Or the idea will forever remain stuck in your head. You can't give up to apathy. Now, let's talk about the situation you're in right now. You're disgusted by what you did before. First of all, it's not uncommon to hate your work. As long as it's just a phase and as long as it doesn't last. As a painter, I have to stare at the same picture for hundreds of hours and I can tell you that after only a few hours of single-minded obsessive focus, my vision really starts to distort things. It's just like learning a new skill. Making a new painting is a big rush of optimism in the beginning, but near the end, things kind of slow down and you start noticing every single mistake. But if you spend too much time doing it, if you focus too much on the mistakes and only the mistakes, then you start seeing them everywhere. You only find what you focus on, and in the end, you become what you focus on. If you only look for mistakes, without keeping your eyes on the actual goal, you start being obsessed with mistakes, you start seeing them everywhere, and before you know it, you think that it was a mistake to even create anything in the first place. To get out of this downward spiral, you need to refresh your perspective. Do something else, exercise, go for a walk, start a new project, go get some tea and come back, or leave your work alone for a month. Whatever can help your brain get rid of this weird obsession on the negative. Most of the time, it's when you're doing something unrelated that the best ideas come. If your goal is clear, your brain can run in the background. Your most creative ideas will not come after 10 hours of hard work, but later in the evening when you brush your teeth or when you do the laundry. When you focus for 10 hours, you force your brain to grind like a machine. You're not asking it to be creative, you're asking it to be productive and follow a strict procedure. But creativity requires to think outside the box. And the only way to think outside the box is to do something that's not related with whatever is inside of the box. You need both to make art, the productive grind and the creative daydreaming. Make sure that you stay receptive to your creative daydreaming. Get a notebook or something to record those ideas that come when you least expect them. Most artists have a sketchbook. I often draw or write a couple of ideas that come just after I went to bed. What really happens is that I ask myself questions all day long when I work on my painting and let the solution appear when it feels like it. What's probably happened to you is that you've let the productive side take over the daydreaming side and now writing feels mechanical and disgusting. Give your creativity some fresh air, but keep your long-term goals in mind. When you're tired and disappointed, stop focusing on the details and just take the time to look at the end goal. Allow yourself to daydream and, above all, persevere. Your first hundred chapters will most likely be your worst. And the only sure way to make great art is to always write one more. If you don't persevere, inspiration will never have a chance to strike when you don't expect it. Great art is not about that one masterpiece everybody praises. It's about the everyday grind that nobody sees. It's about failing one day 
and having the courage to keep working the next day. I hope this will help you with inspiration. You have to give it a chance. Florent.